Hey, peace world. Thanks for pressing play on another Pay Me No Mind Sports and Entertainment video. My name is Wood. Uh, gonna jump into some bite down boxing coverage. Uh, it's another, you know, I, I tell you, man, a lot of people don't, in my opinion, a lot of people don't really uh, stress or focus on their enthusiasm towards boxing um, and the, the good stuff that's happening in boxing. The positive things that are happening in boxing, it, it, they just don't, you know, they just don't uh, resonate. Doing so doesn't resonate. Uh, it's all about, you know, the controversy and, you know, whatever, whatever. But it's a lot of action going on this weekend, man. It's a lot of people putting in a lot of effort to um, bring boxing back. And, you know, it might not be the biggest boxing but I think if you don't take into consideration the circumstances that they're trying to do this in, uh, you know the the threats to the uh, to the people trying to to the people organizing it, to the production crews, to the fighters, you know a lot of people are putting a lot on the line, man, to go out here and earn a living and at the same time entertain people. So I'm excited as hell, man. That's that's just me. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. Um, actually, there's a card tomorrow uh, on, ESP, on ESPN Plus. Headlined by Jono uh, Carroll, who's 18-1-1 against Max Hughes. I just know Carroll from uh, from Instagram, and he had the fight with... Um, had a pretty interesting fight against Tevin Farmer where he lost. But, um, you know, it's midweek fighting. I don't know any of these other guys. It's four, it's five fights on there. We'll see how many pop up on ESPN Plus. You've been paying that four ninety nine per month, you know, possibly the last several months when it's not been much on there besides UFC. So it's a chance to use that app. Um, so I'm gonna check that out tomorrow. I might even check it out on demand or something. Uh, Friday night, week three of uh, fight camp. At middleweight, it's headlined by Felix Cash, who's 12-0 against Jason Wellborn, who's 24-8 for the uh, Commonwealth middleweight title or British Empire middleweight title. All I know is Jason Wellborn was the uh, was the fight. Uh, it was um, he fought uh, Jared Hurd. Uh, I think that was before. Damn, I, I'm getting a little confused in my timeline right there. I know he fought, uh, I think that was before the Julian Williams fight, maybe. Uh, so I don't have a lot on that card either. It's four or five fights. Looks like five fights. Me, I'd probably be most interested in the Super Bantamweight fight between Shannon Courtney, who's 5-0, and and Rachel Ball, who's 5-1. and We had that uh, excellent uh, women's title fight last week between Terry Harper and... Uh, Natasha Jonas, uh, you know, some guys out there, some fight fans, man, can really only show interest in the women according to the looks of the women. So, you know, Shannon Courtney is uh, pretty easy on the eyes. Uh, she's active. She's trying to be active. And, you know, and is, is who, uh, you know, it's one of the many women who uh, match room boxing and Eddie Hearn is, is, is investing in. So I'm interested to see what what she does. I'm not saying that's why I'm interested in her fight. I'm just uh, continuing to see what how she uh, how she uh, matures as a fighter. Um, so, and Super Bantamweight, and Wake, to be honest, is not a. I'm not familiar with a whole lot of other fighters there. So uh, at that division, but like I said, she's made somewhat of a name for. It, does a pretty good interview. Uh, doesn't fight too bad. So I'm interested to see what they, you know, what she does. Then we have Saturday night. We, you kind of, uh, you know, it, it's funny. After just a couple of weeks back into it, and you got one of those nights where you got, you might have to watch your laptop or, you know, a tablet or your cell phone if you want to watch the zone action. Uh, from live from Tulsa, Oklahoma, streaming on the Zone USA. Uh, it's kind of funny not seeing um, Eddie Hearn too involved 
with uh, this car and promoting it being that it's the first time, I believe it's the first time that women are headlining a DAZN uh, card. But uh, undisputed welterweight champion Cecilia Brightcoos and I believe unified uh, junior lightweight. I mean, junior welterweight. I'm sorry. Junior welterweight. So the undisputed 147-pound champion is Cecilia Brightcoos and the unified 140-pound champion, Jessica McCaskill. I actually was on the uh, the e-conference, the Zoom conference with them earlier today. Didn't get to ask uh, Cecilia any questions. I only had one or two, but, you know, didn't happen. Got to ask quite a few for McCaskill. I actually recorded them, but... I don't feel like going through the process of editing and all that stuff for minimal, you know, for, for two people, you know, for my mom and my uncle or something. Uh, but I think it's going to be a pretty interesting fight, man. Um, Cecilia, in my opinion, she's slowing down a little bit. She's, I want to say she's 38 years old. It's going to be 39. Yeah, she's 38. She's going to be 39 in September. She mentioned on the call, she's 36 and 0. Um, uh, and McCaskill's just eight and two, came through her last. I want. Uh, I don't know if that was her last or her the fight before. I think it was the fight before that, uh, not the rematch against Farias, but the fight that she had out in um, in Oxen Hill at the MGM uh, National Harbor. I thought that was uh, that decision was a bit disputed in my opinion, but I think McCaskill, her work rate, her pressure. Uh, her her tendency to kind of smother her opponents. I think in what I saw, Brightcoos the way that she slowed down against Bustos or Bustos, I'm a little concerned that this this could be a little challenging for her. I'm interested to see what McCaskill brings out of her. Also in that on that card is uh, Israel Madrimov. Just at uh, this is a WBA I believe uh, eliminator for super welterweight. Uh, Madrimov is one of these very uh, interesting talents. Uh, just 5-0, and trying to make a championship fight already. He's going up against Eric Walker Sr., who's 20-2. and uh, I didn't get a chance. I got to talk to Madrimov. I did not get a chance to, to talk to Walker, but I wanted to know how did he think about what was different. You know, he faced uh, Chris Pearson a couple years ago who was a highly touted guy uh, for um, for Mayweather Promotions. He faced him and uh, defeated him, upset him. And now here he is with another highly touted, you know, attraction and uh, a less experienced guy than uh, Pearson at that point being 5-0. But, uh, you know, Madrimov could be a major player in uh, at 154 in the next f couple of years. Uh, like I said, this is a title eliminator. So in theory, he could be fa if he wins, he could be facing you know a title list here pretty soon. What makes that complicated is he's fighting on the zone. So um, you know, it's something to tune. That's the storyline there. And then Eric Walker, you know, is going to be a tough fighter. Uh, a, a tough challenge for Madrimo. My, and my second question for Eric Walker would have been, you know, you're coming back down to Super Welter after going up to middleweight for the contender. Um, I think he fought locally or in this region uh, last time out up in Detroit. I was out of town and didn't get to make it to that one to see it in, per in person. Uh, he was optimistic and enthusiastic on the, on the call today. Um, didn't really get to talk about his op and that's the thing going against a guy like Madrimo who has this unique talent or interesting talent um what kind of preparation has Walker been able to have what kind of access is, access has he had to sparring partners gyms uh so on and so forth i think he said he had 24 days uh to get ready for this one so it's a 12 round fight. You know, how is bro holding up in the sixth round, the fifth round, you know, maybe even as early as the fourth round, you know, what's going on there. So that's, what's interesting about that. As you know, this was supposed to be, um, what's his name? Jesus or who? Damn. 
I always forget my man's first name, uh, Martinez, the little uh, the little super flyweight guy. Julio Martinez, Julio Cesar Martinez. Uh, he was supposed to fight Mc McWilliams Arroyo, but uh, Martinez had the uh, the injury. It was a resp respiratory tract, something that that pulled him off of this. So that elevated Bright Coops and McCaskill into the main event. Uh, interestingly, Madrimov is not the co-main event. They mentioned earlier that this newcomer who's making his debut, Mark Castro, a featherweight, uh, will be facing Raul Corona in the uh, in the co-main event. That's a little weird, but they might be throwing um, they might be throwing a Madrimov and Walker at the front of the uh, stream or the card. For some reason, I don't know why, because it's a, it's a, uh, it's, it's not a broadcasted fight. It's a streaming fight. So, uh, but they did mention that that Castro was the co. Maybe they said he was the co feature. I, I can't see them doing that. But anyway, um, also on here is Shakrim Shakram uh, Giasov against Winston Campos. Um, a kid that I'm really interested in seeing is uh, featherweight Raymond Ford, who's just 5-0 against Aaron, Eric Manriquez, who's 7-10-1. Uh, if you remember, Manriquez is the guy who mixed it up against uh, the zone's uh, highly touted newcomer, uh, Otha Jones III. That's the video. I mean, that's the fight in Chicago where Otha Jones... Just had a kind of pedestrian outing somewhat against Manriquez. Uh, it went six rounds or, or four or six rounds. But Eddie Hearn came out and was critical of um, of Otha Jones III, his, his, uh, his performance. And there was some back and forth online, um, you know, so on and so forth. But Otha Jones III bounced back in his fight. He was on the card down in um, Miami around the Super Bowl, um, Demetrius, uh, damn, Boo Boo, can't think of his last name, Andre, he was on that fight and demolished a guy, knocked the guy out very easily, and so he responded to that criticism, so it'll be interesting to see what Manriquez does against Raymond Ford, kind of gives us some idea What's the the uh the levels between Ford and Otha Jones the third? Could be a, a a matchup down the line if you care to connect the dots like that. Uh middleweight Nikita Bobby is all also on there. He's eight and zero against Jarvis Williams. I got a couple of questions in with Nikita Bobby. Um again, how are you preparing? You're a young fighter, eight and zero. Remember a couple fights ago, a uh, Bobby uh I don't know if he went to distance with some. I thought he went to distance. Uh, with the guy that they thought he should have gotten out of there and d didn't have a great outing. He was in camp with uh, Daniel Jacobs for his preparation for uh, Saul Canelo Alvarez. So, um, you know, again, the zone and matchroom boxing USA picked up a couple of these, uh, these, these, these young fighters across the country. They've been grooming them. Like I said, he's 8-0. Uh, how does he look? And coming out of this COVID situation, when it, when the gyms were closed to when the gyms uh, opened up, how does he look? Is he is he is he ready to start being stepped up? You know. And then um, who else? I think that's it. That's on there. I'm really excited about the Bright Coos fight and and, and Jessica McCaskill. Um, I'm at the point, man, where. If, if 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 they can make these like last week, you know Harper and Jonas was a was a nice surprise. So if McCaskill, she knows what she's up against, uh, and then Brightcoos wants to, you know, she's undisputed. So uh, if they put in a good effort, I'm here for it. I'm going to celebrate it. Uh, also on Saturday night on Showtime, it's not even on Box Rec right now, which is kind of funny. But um, they actually have the press conference tomorrow. David Benavidez Jr. I mean, I'm sorry, just David Benavidez. Um, the WBC champion who, uh, you know, had an interesting fight, the challenging fight with Anthony Durrell last time out. 
He's fighting Romer uh, Angulo, who also fought in Miami on that Demetrius Andre card uh, against uh, Anthony Sims. Horrible night for Anthony Sims. Uh, so that's Saturday. You know, that, that's also Saturday. Is Benavidez against Romer uh, Alexis Angulo. Also on there is Otto Violin, heavyweights. Otto Violin and Travis Kaufman. Uh, and then Raleigh Romero is on there on that card as well. I can't think of who his opponent is right now because, uh, like I said, it's not on box rec. So, um, the card starts at 9 o'clock. At 9 o'clock uh, Saturday for the Showtime fight. I'm not sure when the... Um, I would imagine... Uh, the 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 zone card is probably gonna st the the under uh, the undercard. I mean, it, it'll probably start around eight. I would imagine somewhere in there. So uh, again, man, uh, I know some of the big fights that we like to see, in particular Loma and uh, Teofimo Lopez. I know that's still being worked out, but uh, we have fights, and it's a lot of fights. <laughs> me this weekend so i'm interested to see what how it turns out um benavidez is a very interesting very exciting uh, offensive fighter romare uh, angulo while he defeated anthony sims i think anthony sims is a junior while he defeated him uh rather easily and he's he's touted as a uh, as a big puncher heavy-handed guy um he looks a little limited to me so his limited style against Benavides, his offensive prowess and his length and uh, his, his, his uh, arsenal of punches and whatnot, his volume, I think that's going to be a pretty interesting fight. And then Valine and, um, and Kaufman, I think Kaufman lost his dad during this COVID situation, pandemic, see where he is mentally. Um, you know, has that inspired him? You know, it's one of those situations where a guy can say, you know, I know my father's looking down at me, you know, can he go in there and put in an inspired uh, performance? And, um, you know, Violin is wanting to capitalize off of nearly upsetting, uh, you know, Tyson Fury a while back. Then Raleigh Romero, I believe he's at what? Lightweight? He's a slugger. You know, he looks like a bruiser. I'm seeing different stuff with him in the gym. And, um... Working with uh, uh working with uh Xavier Martinez and, and and Floyd Mayweather and probably uh Tank Davis. So uh you know Riley's been a guy that's been you know chasing a fight with uh Gar with Ryan Garcia and whatnot. So uh it'd be nice to see him look pretty good. You can see these showtime cards are a mix of what you would see on the show box and then some of their champions. So like it's, it's a mixture of stuff. People are trying. Um, I'm here for most of it. I guess I'm just optimistic like that, and I like boxing. So uh, that's it, man. That's kind of the update. Um, that's it, man. Bite down boxing. Don't let them count you out. My name is Wood. Uh, pay me no mind. Sports and entertainment. You don't have to be great to start, but you have to start to be great. Enjoy all the action this weekend, man. I know you're going to see two good fights out of this, out of all of that. Two or three, maybe even three. I'm going to see three. Peace.